Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for those who have passed away in our community, including Scranton Police Officer John Halleck and Lori Ann Stanko Getz. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Here. Mr. Schuster? Present. Dr. Rothschild? Here. Mr. McAndrew? Present. Mr. King? Here. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority Board of Directors meetings held April 6, 2023 and May 3, 2023. 3B, correspondence received June 13, 2023 from OECD regarding cumulative permits licensing reports for January through May 2023. 3C, correspondence received June 13, 2023 from OECD regarding permits licenses report for the month of May 2023. 3D, Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Development Evaluation Report received June 13, 2023. 3E, Controller's Report for the month ending May 31, 2023. Are there any comments on any third order items? If not, received and filed. Do any council members have any announcements at this time? I have uh, just two. Um, the um, garbage pickup naturally is one day behind because of the holiday Monday. And um, Weston Park, pool is open daily now from noon till 6 p.m. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a quick one. So North Scranton Neighborhood Association and the North Scranton Rotary Club invite you to Sunday Funday, uh, June 25th, from 12 to 2 at Weston Park. Uh, it's on Spring Street and Hollister Avenue. It includes food, drinks, and entertainment, and they look forward to seeing all of you. And that is all I have. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, I, I uh, first want to say I hope everyone had a great Father's Day on Sunday. And uh, second, this coming weekend, uh, there's going to be an event at Nayog Park. Uh, it's for World Refugee Day. And that's going to be the Saturday from 2 to 4. Um, and uh, World Refugee Day honors the strength, resilience, and courage of millions of refugees throughout the world. Everyone's welcome to come to the free event to share in uh, the rich cultural heritage of the refugee communities here in Northeast Pennsylvania. And um, this year, the celebration will include cultural music and dance, games, and activities for children, light for refreshments, and more. That's all. Thank you. Anyone else? No. I would like to congratulate the Mid Valley girls softball team for winning the state championship, which I thought was outstanding. It's the first state championship of any, uh, in any sport, uh, male or female, so I thought that was great. And it's always nice to see uh, teams from our area excel at the state and national level, so that was great. Thank you. Fourth order, citizen participation. Joan Hodewanitz. Joan Hodewanitz, Granton. Um, looking at the city's website this week, um, obviously there's no firefighters union contract. We got 113 more days to go, I guess. Um, I believe you told me last week that the delinquent property tax database was on the website. I failed to find it. Are, did you see it or were you simply told it's up? I believe I was told. I okay, was well I didn't see it and I clicked on every possible icon. And as I recall, um, many moons ago, there was an Excel spreadsheet in third order which showed various city council tasked actions. 
This one was dated April 2022, marked active. So it's been a while. And the delinquent refuse tax database hasn't been updated since the end of February. It's nice to have these databases to see, you know, who are the communists in our society, you know, when want to know who, who hasn't paid their fair share of the load. Um, any update on the police union arbitration? No update, they're just continuing with the okay. uh, arbitration. Um, I saw an interesting article in the paper on Saturday. Wildfire smoke threatens region's air again. Pollution may reach unhealthy levels in Lackawanna and Luzerne counties. Um, and then I pulled up an old article from two years ago. City eyes keeping fixed health post. Foundation to fund coordinator spot for the first three years. This is when Dr. Rachna Saxena well, was appointed our public health coordinator for a three year period beginning in 2021. And her salary was funded by the Moses Taylor Foundation for a three year period. And I recall when we had the code read on the air quality, I saw in the paper that um, refuse pickup was delayed by one day. But the question I had asked and not gotten an answer to was, what are we doing about the homeless population who are outdoors 27, 24 hours a day, seven days a week? When we have a cold blue in the winter, we get them inside. So if this is ever gonna happen to us again, I would hope that we're developing a plan that we can protect those people if we can. Um, I haven't heard squat from this public health coordinator. I mean, she may be advising the mayor privately, but it'd be nice to know if we wanna make this a permanent position, what's her value added? And we, we have an obligation to our homeless population to think about things like another code red. Um, bothers me that nothing happened. I'll, I'll speak on uh, fifth order on that. We did okay. get an update from her. Um, I like the 5-H about the fireworks code amendment. My only comment is I don't think two police officers are gonna be enough to make a dent in uh, the issues we have during the summer with uh, fireworks. And I know from my mother's neighbors that when they are doing fireworks, um, they're also drinking and in some occasions doing drugs. So two officers may not be enough. Um, controller's report, you'll be pleased to know that Uffberg got two checks in May, one for $41,783.11 and another one for $7,437.50. I think the first one involved the labor union contracts. And Kohansky got two checks. Our auditor, $7,500 and $2,965. And let's hope that's the last check we have to write to those people. Um, and I need an explanation in fifth order of 5L, this non-taxable debt issuance of up to $5 million. I didn't understand the legalese. I didn't understand the legislative page which said it has no financial impact on the city. Why are we issuing debt or taking out debt to reimburse the city for the capital projects? I mean. Where did we go wrong? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sotowan. It's Faye Ferranis. Faye Ferranis, Scranton. I'm going to start by saying this. When you don't have accountability and transparency, you are undermining the faith of accountability for all the residents. They're losing their faith in the, in the administration and council. Every day without accountability is a problem. Last week what I saw was deplorable. When it came time to vote for the legislation, Jessica Rothschild said there were some issues, and then they got the three votes. Here you go. See this? This is a three-two vote all the time. 
the three loyalists, Smurl, King, and Rothschild, doing the mayor's bidding again, it's delaying this legislation. Why? Because the mayor does not want it to pass. She doesn't want any regulations on overtime. Do you know that by the end of June, there will be $300,000 in overtime since January with no records and no dates? But you said, each one of you said, Smurl, King, and Rothschild said, you wanted accountability and transparency. But you're hypocrites, because if you wanted it, you wouldn't vote to table it. If you have a problem with the legislation, I'm sure Attorney Gallagher could straighten that out with the police and fire and make amendments. Now, this is just ridiculous. This has to stop with these three two votes all the time. And Mr. Schuster and Mr. McAndrew, I hope every week, every week that you ask to put this back on the table. Now, it's, it's unconscionable that the mayor voted for transparency and accountability and yet she is doing everything she can not to be accountable and transparent. Why? Because the voting block of unions is the biggest voting block in the city. She needs the union votes, but yet she'll make the people pay over $300,000 for six months in overtime, and it's going to continue. And you know what else? Mr. Smurl, Mr. King, and Ms. Rothschild, you're complicit. You're as bad as the getaway car in a robbery. You're complicit in alleged fraud, alleged deceit, and alleged theft of services by allowing these people, these union people, to take our money, taxpayers' money, and with no accountability whatsoever. Ms. Rothschild, you said once that nobody tells you how to vote. Well, why don't you prove me wrong? Why don't you vote for the people for a change instead of keep on standing by the mayor? She may be an ally for you for gay rights, but that's no reason to vote for her. She's using the three of you, and you don't even care. So something has to be done. And Mr. King, let me say this. Please spare us your self-righteous diatribe in motions to defend your honor. You have no honor. You don't deserve to sit here. Mr. Schmerl doesn't deserve to sit here. Neither does Jessica Rothschild. Mark Payne is running for, for counsel come November. I hope everybody votes for Mark Payne. I'm a Democrat, but I'll vote for him. He's a Republican. Doesn't matter the party. We're talking about getting rid of people that are not accountable, that are not working for the people. You three, Smurl, King, and Rothschild, especially you, Rothschild and Smurl, because you're running for election, you should never be elected again because you're not helping the people. Now, I, I'm sick of your excuses. You keep on making excuses all the time. Oh, we have an issue with this, we have an issue with that. I asked you point blank, do you agree with having accountability and dates and reasons for open. I never heard any private business, if they had somebody working overtime and they didn't write the reason or the date, they'd be fired. But not you. You want to keep them because you want their votes. What are you afraid of? The director is not doing his job down there, Scott Petroface and Chris Smith, the supervisor. Neither one of them are doing their job. They should be removed. Larry West didn't help either. Since last summer, this overtime has been out of control, and there's nobody stopping it. And you're supposed to be there helping the people, but you're not. So what are we going to do about it? One thing else, Mr. King, you said you're, on, you're only one vote. You know what? Maybe you're not brushing up on the laws too much at city council, but guess what you have? You have veto power. You could override the mayor's veto, and you could vote for this legislation to have accountability and transparency. The same thing that she ran on, the mayor ran on transparency. She's a hypocrite, as are you. So let's prove it. And I, please, Mr. King, I don't want to hear you go on and on about how you're not this and you're not that. You are complicit. You're as guilty as she is, and you're allowing theft of services. These people should go to jail for what they're doing. So remember this. Don't vote for Rothschild and Smurl come November. Vote for Mark Payne or anybody else that's running, but not them, because they're not for you. They're for the mayor. They're doing her bidding. They will never stop doing her bidding. Thank Puppets. you, Mrs. Francis. Bob Bullis. Council Bob Bolas, Granton. It was a tragedy this past week to see one of our police officers die as he did, with everybody ignoring what was going on, that his life possibly could have been saved if people were paying attention. 
It's the same way with kids getting into pools and things of that nature. Some people just don't realize the danger when people are around pools, partying or otherwise. And the sad part was one of our troopers was ambushed and shot and killed in the line of duty. It asks us a question, what's this world coming to? Legal marijuana, go in, smoke, go out, drink, go out, kill people, do whatever you want to do. Where do we draw the line on America? You know, take a look at the flag there. It's called the American flag. In the front of this building, there should only be one flag flying, and that's the American flag. That's the flag to honor. Nothing else should be honored. Look at Memorial Day. Did you look at all the white crosses, the veteran ceremonies all over? They get one day. Our vets, we vets, get one day. And that's all we get to honor that flag from the Civil War, from World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Korea. They gave us the right to stand here tonight and bitch about whatever we want to bitch about as free people. Is that flag there? Not any other flag that's flying out there. That's the flag to fly. That's the flag to honor. That's the one that says the law is the law and it's for everyone, not just separate people. And uh, you turn around, you see all this. I donated with President Trump a tractor trailer load of disinfectant wipes to Palestine, Ohio. And you saw what they went through down there because people didn't give a darn what was going on with the contamination and everything else. And from an environmental owner of a company, I was out there and I couldn't believe what I was watching, the contamination being spread by idiots out there with trucks and everything that were dragging it all over their city. I have trailer loads of wipes. I've been here before. We're donating them out all over the country. We don't want anything for them. We're out here to help those that need the help that could use them. We have a couple trailer loads being delivered right here in this city in the next couple days. And they're being donated out, and they're being donated out by myself and President Trump, because this is a joint venture we took on. It's not looking for heroism or anything else. It's showing compassion in this country, which we've lost. We're throwing our vets out of hotels and putting illegal immigrants in. Is that fair? Is that the right thing to do? And we're ignoring it. You know, I asked how many times change the Biden sign, at least on Interstate 81. I was in Florida where I have operations in Florida. I just come back from there and listen to people who travel through here want to know why we are honoring Biden after we're seeing everything that's going on with the Biden family and the administration, illegals walking through the border, yet we drive down the road, get a parking ticket, lose our license, lose our rights, but these scumbags come in here, don't lose anything, and they're taken from us. Thank you, Joe Biden. And we want to honor him here in the city of Scranton? I'll honor any president that did anything for America, not take away from us. Look what it cost us to operate our operations today. Thank you, Joe Biden. So I could go on and on down the list. Take the sign on Interstate 81 and just put Scranton, next exit. You want to call them the expressway for Biden? You want to be dumb enough to call Biden Street Biden and do this against us? I'm a Republican, but I'm an American first, no matter what part of the world I've been in. They don't ask me am I a Republican or a Democrat. I'm an American. When I come through the borders, I go through customs. They said, who are you? I'm an American. We're not doing that anymore. We're not being Americans. We're not taking care of our people. But if anybody wants any wipes, they could call me a Polis truck parts. We'll be glad to donate them. They could come get them. If they want a trailer load, we'll see that they get a trailer load. And the last thing I have is with Bill Gahan, that federal suit is proceeding because it happened right here at City Council, that he violated the rules of council. And he's going to understand one thing. He called me a lot of names. But one thing he did, he picked on the wrong guy because I stand up for my rights. I stand up for that flag. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowles. Wes Spiller.
Good evening, Council Les Spindler, city resident. Uh, first off, my thoughts and prayers go out to the Hyalic family. That was a terrible tragedy. And uh, I wish the, the family all the best. Uh, fireworks. I talked about it last year when my dog was terrorized. And I heard on the news the other night, I couldn't believe my ears. I don't know if it's a city ordinance or a state ordinance, that on July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, people are allowed to shoot off fireworks till 1 in the morning. That, that, that's ridiculous. People have children who want to go to sleep. People have to go to work the next day or get up early in the morning. And they can shoot off fireworks till 1 in the morning? That's, something's wrong there. That's, that's ridiculous. And, uh, and second of all, I called the police last year because my dog was terrorized because I know people are breaking the law and nothing is done. I forget the exact distance, but it's, it has to be 100 or 150 feet away from another residence. And I know in Trip Park anyway, I don't think there's anywhere where residences are 100 feet apart from each other. And they're going off, especially in a new development. I could see them from my house and I hear them. And it's ridiculous. And I, and I called the police last year and uh, they said, we'll send somebody up. And uh, nobody ever got there because uh, they just kept shooting them off and shooting them off. And uh, until somebody gets hurt, maybe that's when I'll try to do something. But, and I said it last year, what they have to do, put every policeman on 4th of July weekend and uh, just cover the city and give people the biggest fine you could. But it probably won't happen. But I, mean, I want to have my say. Uh, next thing. Uh, Mr. King, you said uh, a while back that uh, we're on the paving list. And where I live is it? Do you know if it's Bulwer Street or North Rebecca? I, I don't know that. I believe that it's posted. Is it's on the website, isn't it? Right. It should be, Mr. King. And, and do we know? If, but I'll verify it for Mr. Spindler. Okay, if you could let him know. Because Bulwer was done no more than five years ago, and uh, North Rebecca wasn't done since the Connors administration. There's cracks in the pavement there, and there's grass growing in the cracks. So it's Rebecca that should be paved, not, not Bulwer. So uh, yeah, I, I hope we'll that's... enough for you. Yeah, I, hope I that's believe taken it's care North of. Rebecca where the drainage issue is, so that'll be North Rebecca. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I'll confirm it last. Okay, thank you. Uh, last time I was here, I talked about the uh, people coming out of the Family Dollar parking lot in West Side the wrong way. Sunday, I took my wife there, and I sat in the car. She was in the store less than 10 minutes. Five cars went out the wrong way in, a, in a less than 10 minutes she was in there. And, and nothing is ever done. And she talked to the manager in there. And they said, there's nothing we can do. And uh, a lot of them, they come in. There's an entrance you can come in through the alley. And on the back of the building, there's a big sign still from when it was Brunetti's. It's painted on the building. It says, exit. And there's an arrow pointing out the back way. Now, if they would put that on the front part of the building, maybe people wouldn't, you know, wouldn't go out the wrong way. One of these days, something terrible is going to happen. But uh, so, I know last time I talked about that, you uh, you said you were going to send letters to somebody or whatever. Did, did, have, has anybody heard anything? I believe we did, didn't we, Mr. Wollenberg? That was reviewed by the traffic officer. I'll follow up with them. If you could, thank okay. you. To make sure something. Yeah, because it's Thanks. it's you know they're not supposed to go out to Main Avenue. Well, all right, that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Ron Elman. Council, I, I certainly agree with Brother Bob's statements uh, about our flag out front and everywhere. This isn't America anymore. America has become like Biden's experiment in socialism. Well, to change 
my usual uh, approach up here. Today, when I was walking the, my little puppy, Chumley, in the area next to Redner's, it's all big grassy area if anybody's ever been there. There's quite a few homeless living back there too, but that's not nothing. And I, I, I heard a voice from above, not, the, not that one. I looked all around it. There was a man standing on the bridge above me yelling at me. He wanted to know if I wanted some water for the dog and he held up a bottle. And I told him I had water in the car, but this gesture of kindness and consideration is why I just love this town and these people here and why I stayed here all these years, over 50 years I've been here. Every once in a while, you'll see something in letters to the editor thanking someone for an act of kindness. This is such a good town. Our mayor's never been a part of this, this group. She's never been a part of Scranton. You know, her, her, her Scranton is the developers downtown, and that's not the Scranton. They're not the ones paying for everything. They're not the people that all of us talk to. It's different stores and businesses. There's not a person in the city, in this whole state, that wishes this mayor would become one of the best that Scranton has ever had in its history in years to come. But I just don't see how she can. She's, she's indifferent to the populace. The city codes mean nothing to her. She got an administration made out of friends and supporters. What she need as much as I hate to say it, she need bazonis and a whole bunch of them in that administration. But that won't happen, I guess. You can't, I don't think you can fire your friends very easily like, uh, let's just take Orlowski that I have my running problem with. A couple months ago, council sent me, gave me a letter stating all the things they'd done. Do you remember that? <laughs> I told you then, not a one of them been uh, addressed. To this very minute, not a one of them been addressed, but on the letter, it said it was all over, it been taken care of, all the cars been removed. That's what I have to deal with, with the city council. For the fun of it, I parked one of my cars at a piece of city property sideways for, uh, across from the house, I don't know, for a week and a half. I didn't get a ticket or nothing. It should have been ticketed. This is your, your property. This is their property. That's just how this, this city is. Maybe tomorrow they'll go tell me to move it or something, but what we need, we need more people from this city to come to these meetings. This city has just turned into, it's, it's, not, it's not a city anymore. It's, it's like a little jerk water town that's a bump in the road to New York. We need to turn it into a city again, like, have events and all like you see on television for Wilkesbury and Stroudsburg. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. That exhausts the sign-in sheet. Is there anyone else who would like to be heard? Hi, Norma Jeffries, Scranton resident. 
and I took notes as I uh, was listening to different things since I came into the room. And uh, the first thing uh, that I wanted to um, address was um, Weston Park and that they're opening their pool. I was out there on Saturday to a graduation party. And what a great feel that is. And it, it gave me such um, longings for my park, which is Nayog, to look like uh, con at the Weston Park. Uh, the grass was all mowed and everything was in tip top shape. The pool was ready to go, you know, it was just so blue and rippling as the filters and everything. The, and um, the kids were there, they weren't at the pool because it was, wasn't open, but the playground and the kids that were at the party that I was at, and everyone had such a great time. And that community room out there is excellent and had a great time out there. So, you know, I couldn't help but think about um, Nayog Park and maybe one day I'll be able to sit and look at our pool with the rippling blue waters and that uh, the kids will be able to enjoy um, the environment that's um, there for them. I know that their pool is now open and also I just uh, wish them a wonderful summer and that they be um, safe and that maybe we can have one similar to that over the coming years at uh, Nayog Park. I know we, there's studies going on and, and things like that, but how many more studies can we have um, before we see something um, that was there? I was up at the park the other day and I got so excited because they were surveying and on. I thought, oh good, they're getting ready to do something. But that wasn't for the park, it was um, I think for the some kind of other field that they're thinking of putting in there, but nothing for the pool. Uh, the second thing I wanted to um, address was um, a thank you to the, to the newspaper. As a kid, um, when school was over, the first thing we did in, on vacation was to go to Vacation Bible School. And that was right after we got finished with um, our studies at school. And this morning's paper, there was a wonderful article in there on Elm Park and their Vacation Bible School. And I thought, what a great thing to turn to page three and see something so positive. Because surrounding those pictures that they had of Elm Park were someone being arrested for, for drugs and, and sex and you know all those things that are so depressing. And just to see that wonderful article on Elm Park on page three, and it was in color too. So it was, it was just so uplifting for me to know that they're still having vacation Bible school that they had at uh, Pine Street Baptist Church when I was a kid. So thank you and kudos to the Times for running that story. Um, and also the third thing that I'm addressing and, and spending my time, you probably wonder us retiree people, Joan and Marie probably come down here to City Hall, but what I've been doing is reading on the Home Room Charter, the Home Rule Charter. And that's quite a document. And um, I have it on my computer and I pull it up and I bookmark where I finish reading it and to continue reading it. And you say, why am I reading that? What I'm looking for, I want to know um, about the, res the residency rules for employment. And I want to know, um, not from the councilman, but I want to see it in writing exactly what it says about that. Because um, in working in HR, as I did before, you know, once you do something, you're setting precedent. And we always try not to do anything to set a precedent. And it just seems like a precedent is being set. So I just wanted to see what the homeroom charter says about that. So as soon as I finish reading it and get find out what I, I am looking for, I will be back to address that. But um, I just want to thank you again for, um, I guess it's a deep, the uh, department of, I guess it's your department, um, Mr. Smurl, that takes care of the parks and all. I'm not sure which one does it, but that park out there at Weston Park, and I hope the kids enjoy it and have a wonderful summer. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Is there anyone else that will be heard? Tom Coyne, Manuka. Tonight is a little bit of uh, paperwork here. 
First off, I want to address 7C on the docket. Uh, it notices, it, there's a notice on 7C that the fire chief is the one who will decide if anyone can perform a First Amendment activity. For the, it's the document on the flag burning in public. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how compelling someone to produce incriminating statements in violation of a Fifth Amendment right will be in conflict with banning a First Amendment right. Uh, when you have to give over information that could po be possibly used to attack you for using your First Amendment right when you're com compelled to do so, you're put in a double bind between the Fifth Amendment and the First Amendment. I think that's going to be a great tool to push uh, city liability in this. I really don't think it's a good idea to put this forward in any form and just leave it under the public safety rather than a specific cutout. And if I plan to protest on Monday morning, is the chief going to be available on Saturday to hand out those documents? Because if I have two days beforehand and it's a Monday morning, I guess that chief needs to be in the office on Saturday so I can get my proper documentation two days beforehand. As of uh, moving on to 7I, 7I is on the Planning Commission. It should be denied not only because the person, uh, Connie, has absolutely no experience in the field. She's a member, uh, she's done accounting and cosmetology. It has nothing in benefit of the Planning Commission whatsoever. Secondary is the fact that using Connie as her name is not her legal name. And I looked at the documentation and code enforcement specifically looks and says that they looked at the database for real estate trash and code enforcement and it used the name Connie. Well, since that's not her legal name, I'm not sure they'd find anything in that. I'm not sure why someone is applying to the city of Scranton and putting in applications using a pseudonym rather than an actual legal name. <clears throat> 5G, which is the going out before, uh, for the public uh, use of commercial lands, uh, for public lands for commercial entity. I understand that during the emergency for COVID, we allowed businesses and restaurants to encroach upon the public streets. I don't think this should be an extended right. As a matter of fact, if they are going to do this, it shouldn't be a fee for just a permit for this allowing them to do it. Since they are encroaching over a temporary 30-day period and there's no longer an emergency, it basically is leasing, leasing that property to that business. And in effect, you are selling them the right to use city property for a business purpose. They should be taxed on it. They should be taxed in property tax because they are now renting it. And as a matter of fact, why not hit them with a renter's tax as well? Because if we start giving city streets over, which are public properties, to private entities for profit, why shouldn't they have to pay for that benefit that they've, they've absorbed? 5H, fireworks. 150 foot is interesting on it. It's from any vehicle or building, whether occupied or not. So that excludes just about everywhere. There is a problem with the bill though, as uh, 245.3 puts allowed times. One of the restrictions on it has a, you have a time for the 4th of July. The act is written in sections two and three notes that you also put limitations on Memorial Day and Labor Day. As of the state code and backup, that is not allowed under Act, uh, Act 47. Specific time periods were put in for the 4th of July. As a matter of fact, it says, noted in the header, except for the authority under this, no municipality shall restrict or regulate fireworks on Memorial Day or Labor Day. So the time exceptions put in there specifically for those dates violate the state ordinance. 
and I have more to say, but I'll come back another day. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, Council. David Austin, resident, taxpayer. Um, when I'm going up and down the street or through a court, I've noticed a lot of goods set out for trash that look like they're very usable. And what my suggestion is to get in touch with the Salvation Army or the Goodwill and donate it. Uh, it's just a shame. Uh, a couple of years ago, I saw a large cooler, and it was filled with water. So it wasn't leaking like a picnic cooler type thing. And uh, uh, you know, you see so many usable items just tossed out to the curb for trash, and uh, that cooler carried a price, uh, something similar, of about $60. So, you know, let somebody else have it. Salvation Army, I picked up a VCR, all my VCRs crapped out. And, uh, I picked one up for 10 bucks and it works. You know, grand. Because the medium for that is a great deal more. And on this overtime business here, uh, it's the only thing we really need to do is to justify what it's spent or why it's spent. If there's some kind of an emergency and this throwing around uh, innuendos about orientations or what somebody did 30 years ago or 50 years ago or whatever, it kind of makes me sick. It just makes me outright sick. I'm sick and tired of that, uh, almost to a point of criminal. You know, the last mayor we had, the landlords got a great break. They got trash fees for the same price as I do. They could have four tenants piled up there. And they got a flat trash fee. And the guy before that's in prison and a guy before that I heard, and it may be a rumor, but uh, Mr. Courtright was arrested two days after the uh, statute of limitations ran out on the Doherty business. So, <laughs> you know, uh, let's not all pull our pants down in public here, you know, because you might not find your, this, uh, in doubt is what you think. Um, now, uh, I'm going to stay on this for quite a while in the future. And this is on tax exempts and the uh, pilots. First of all, the pilots are only a fraction, a small fraction, 5%, maybe 7 maybe 4 of what the tax loss is. And there certainly are fire and police and paving the streets and uh, whatever on top of it. Uh, expenses, all of the municipal expenses. And what I would suggest, they should be happy to do it. If they don't have the money or somebody's going to have to go without a meal down at the soup kitchen, then sign up on a petition to be delivered to the state. Because all of this talk about swimming pools and stuff like that, I'm mainly concerned about taxes. If somebody wants to have a park and make a bunch of rules I don't want to abide by, I don't get off on arguing with the police officer about the law. I just don't go. You know, and that's it. Somebody else wants to go, fine. If you can build a swimming pool without jacking my taxes up like the county did with that stupid baseball field, it's 12 bucks to park now. 
it was a dollar fifty more for me to get in to see baseball game, the uh, Philharmonic, and fireworks. And then on top of it, there was hardly a crack in that concrete in that stadium. And now it's 12 bucks to park on top of it. So, I mean, and then 38% increase, sorry about that, increase in property taxes from the county. That type of stuff, you're right. Then I don't need it. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Virgil Argenta. Being that nobody took me up on my offer over the last couple of weeks, can I give you some uh, addresses? I have one in the 70s, you guys off the Sure. Thank you. Yep. Um, drinking in public parks, is it certain parks that have this rule or is it all parks are banned from it? And if I may give you some more reading material. I frequent the Western, Western Field area, and I like to, you know, open the meetings on the weekends, and it's, um, it's kind of getting a little bit out of control. I mean, um, I don't know if we have vendor permits or food licensing, or if there's a promoter that's promoting that, and uh, it's turning into a, a fair, as you can see. The uh, park and recreation trailers are turned into bike ramps and seesaws during Saturday and Sundays. The dumpster is overflowing with plantations, plantinas, bananas, street corn. Uh, I broke open some bags loaded with beers and beer bottles. There's uh, multiple food vendors. Now there's um, prop vendors with t-shirts and hats. Uh, there's grills all over the place. You can't walk the track. As like I said, Saturday and Sunday evenings, it's totally uncomfortable to even go, go there. We just don't fit in. The alcoholic beverages, everybody's drinking, rowdy, there's soccer games all over. With the crowds of this magnitude, usually there's a police officer working special duty shift and or a fire marshal. I don't see either of those there. Um, I went there Sunday morning after the festivities. Well, it was Monday, June 19th, I went there and the parking lot is pitiful. The grease is all over the place. There's bottles, cans. Our Park and Recreations Department shouldn't be picking this up. If this is a festival, there's a promoter, and the promoter's charging for space, let alone the drinking. And when these people get together in different cultures, and they're drinking and playing their games and whatever, that's a recipe for disaster. And we all know that Weston Field has its own problems with the shootings, the stabbings, and the other incidents are taking, taking place there. We don't need more, and this is a quality park for all of us. And a Saturday and a Sunday afternoon and evening, definitely not for us. So if there's a promoter involved, we need to look into it. If there's food vendors and they don't have a health license and they're not paying their fair shares, we need to look into that. The alcoholic beverages, if they're gonna drink there, we need a police officer on site. It's not fair to the residents of the Weston Field area, and it's not, not, excuse me, I'm sorry. And it's not fair to the residents of the city who frequent Weston Field. And if the pool opens, and you're having these bazaars and these get-togethers, is the pool gonna be inundated with this as well? I mean, we need to seriously look into this. The dumpster overflowing, and they're having their bazaars, we taxpayers pay for that. The job johnnies that they don't appreciate that are tipped over, we pay for that. Those wagons that the parks and recreations use to haul the machinery around the, to do the other parks to keep them pristine, we pay for those. And if they're gonna come in here and act like heathens and animals, shut it down. Simple as that. I asked last week if there's a uh, inventory list on city properties. Mr. King, do we have an inventory list? And if you can look into that for me, please, I'd appreciate that. An inventory list on? Of city properties, city vacant lots, anything at all that the city owns, it's a property. So that I can personally go out and do my walking tour because you guys evidently are too busy to take a walking tour with me. City vacant lots? Yes, sir. So if we and also properties. Thing. Like we're having an issue with the My that Myrtle Street. 
that Mr. So we can put some clarity on who owns that. And then another thing I've noticed as I was in the parks, there's city vehicles all over the place. Do we have a motor pool or inventory of the vehicles in one set location where the vehicles should be? We have those carts that the kids are using as bike ramps. Put them all together somewhere. There's two pickup trucks there. There's a pickup truck in front of the place. There's pickup trucks at people's homes. Do we know what we have? Do we know what they're being used for? Also, if we have an inventory list of the vehicles, that would be greatly appreciated. Secondly, while I have some more time, the neighbors have been inundated me with fire calls, and everybody seems to be getting outrageous bills for fire calls. If the mayor is going to implement and have come up with all these programs, have the mayor come to the meetings here so that she don't answer to you people. Let her answer to us. Let us question her. If all these implementations that she's putting in and thinks they're good for us and speaks for us, then come here. Let us ask you about it, and you explain to us, because she's certainly not answering you guys. So maybe she'll answer us. Thank you, Mr. Argent. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. Mr. Argent. Yes, sir. I'm going to address um, the structural fire fees that are being charged in fifth order. Thank you. Okay. And also the parks, if you could look at the alcoholic beverages, please. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Marie Schumacher. Uh, last week, uh, there was quite a bit of uh, discussion on items that would probably be resolved or at least further discussed at the uh, uh, municipal recreation meeting, which was to be held on Thursday. Does anybody know why, when we got there to go, it just said uh, it was canceled? That was put up before the, the start of the, the, the time of the start. That doesn't. That's the email I, re I received. <sighs> Something's wrong. Maybe they didn't want to discuss the things that were going to be discussed. I don't know, but that's not right. Uh, now, has the Environmental Advisory Board been established yet? I mean, I would like to see what these people are supposed to be doing once they get on, and how many people have been, you have voted on so they can get it. I guess that's what they're waiting for, is enough people So to, far, I believe we've named three, correct? We haven't, the administration. Of how many, eight? The administration has named three, and council uh, plans to introduce uh, two names shortly. Uh, when will we see what you're appointing them to? What do you That's, mean? What? We're, city Council ha, uh, has the right to name two members oh. to the five-member um, environment. Yeah, I, I, I think that's fine, but what is the, uh, the advisory board, what are they uh, authorized to do? Or well, they're, they have no authority. Right, they're just strictly no advisory. Advisory to council or advisory to the entire city or what? I believe to the administration and to council. Okay. Uh, now, I, I want to just let you know in case you don't read the, the legal notices that there is a Scranton Sewer Authority Board meeting on Thursday, I believe. Yeah, Thursday at 530 in the government governor's room. Uh, I mean, I'm beginning to think perhaps it is time to decide whether it's whether the advisory board is, is still needed or is it just going to go until all the money that's in escrow has been spent and then it'll just collapse? I don't know, but I think it's it's time for some discussion. Uh, and then, I would like to know more on uh, Sorrenti. I mean, I went there and nothing, you know, it was not obvious as what is happening there. Uh, Mr. McAndrew, I know you were in the something uh, in, I believe it was January of this year. But, you know, what is happening there? Why don't we get a report on what what's there? and? And why I thought when that was established, I really thought that was going to be our safety building. 
But now last week you have uh, made another, another uh, place for the fire department and apparently Sorrenti is only gonna be police. And I, do we have a budget for the, the Rockwell facility? We just applied for, for a grant. Pardon? We did, they just applied for a grant. I didn't get it. A, a grant was applied for uh, two oh. weeks ago in legislation. It was, I'll get an update on Sorrenti too, okay. in fifth would, order. Yeah. I would like to know how much they're gonna be using. And then, uh, what, who in the state, uh, you, you put it, uh, send it to uh, the uh, painting and the, uh, of the barrier on the Spruce Street Bridge uh, to the state. Nothing has happened on the railroad a bridge side of, on South, South Scranton, as Tom talked about before. There's uh, reflectors on like probably every six feet and the end is all painted yellow. Uh, nothing has happened on the, uh, the central city portion. So, except that it's been sent to the, the state to do it. Now, who do we contact at the state to nag so something happens? Frank, did we ever get an answer? I know we inquired about that. Yes, we do. PennDOT in Dunmore, Mr. Uh, Wasilchak is handling it and they should start that project soon. Okay. I'll get a timeline, Murray. So it sounds like they're gonna start that soon at PennDOT in Dunmore. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. So anyone else like to be heard? Good evening, Council. Doris Kolaski, Scranton resident. I'm gonna be really quick. I just wanna go over a few things. The curb, the cut down of the curb on Olive Street and Colfax Avenue has never been done. So I just wanted to have that double checked on. Um, I'd also like to get if there's any update on 421 Colfax, the Olivetti property, that uh, somebody has been cutting the grass, I can see, but that's that abandoned house on Colfax, and I was with all the roads living in it, and I was just kind of wondering if there was any updates on that. Doris, what's uh, the address of that? 421 Colfax. Um, then um, I also wanted to, I would clarify something on that way, the city waivers, when you live out of the city, but you can work in the city. I was always under the impression that if your, tax, if your job was paid by city taxes, you had to live in the city, because otherwise you would have no reason not to want to strike for more wages and, and such kind of stuff. So I was just, when did that all start? Was I just asleep at the wheel? Because I thought I saw something like maybe 10, 20 years ago about a policeman that wanted to live out of the city and I thought it was denied. So i just like some clarification on what that's all about. And uh, the only last thing is and the bus that I spoke about at the shelter for the bus on Mulberry and well, and then maybe any other bus stops too. If anybody ever heard anything more about that? And while I'm on buses, for some reason, and I don't know if I just dreamt it one night, or if I saw it in the paper like I thought, that there was some, gonna be some kind of big meeting between the transit company and the city about revising schedules and getting new buses. And uh, I was wondering if I just made all that up in my head, like, <laughs> or if that's true. And if it is true, um, the input should be to get those buses on a schedule that people can actually ride the work out, like hours that if they wanted to go to work at the mall or at the downtown, they can actually get a bus that gets you there around the time work opens and buses that come around the time work closes since basically 
or we have no real public transportation system. I just came from a place that had like the most phenomenal public transportation system that I ever saw in my whole life and uh, made me thinking about Scranton even more. But I do know that they never run on the schedule, or at least they didn't, of businesses. Because people that worked for me when I was, uh, before I retired, those people sometimes had to ride a bus, had to leave work 10 minutes late, early, to get a bus, and we quit at 5 o'clock. Or, and the bus came right on our corner on Capulse Avenue. Or they had to come in to work like 10 or 15 minutes late or 15 minutes before the door opened because the, of the bus schedule. So I, if, if there is going to be something where the transit authority, when they get their new buses, is going to take a look at the whole programming of how the buses sync with their transfers in the city, I think maybe it's something city council should look into to make sure that maybe it does sync up with what people need. And that's it. Have a good night, and thank you. Thank you, Doris. Me too. Is there anyone else that would like to be heard? Fifth order, 5A motions. <laughs> Mr. Smurl, do you have any motions or comments? Uh, yes, I do. Um, first is um, 6A this evening. We're going to be voting on uh, the permits fee schedule for licensing and inspection. Um, that has been completely done over, and um, it has reduced all the um, inspection fees and the permit fees. So um, this was um, very helpful for contractors and for homeowners because we were very high on our inspection rates um, for the city of Scranton. Um, the second is um, we received a letter from East Mountain um, residents. Um, it didn't include anyone's name or con contract information. So I, I sent the following request to Director Petrface um, to cover what was requested. Um, they asked the uh, storm, to storm catch basins to be cleaned. Um, so I asked they send the street cleaner up, clean the storm um, basins up there, uh, and also do pretty much go up and do the entire mountain and, and try and get the garbage out of all the storm drains that are blocked. Um, and they say that the, there's brush growing out past the sidewalks out to the curb line. Um, I, I believe this may be the same stuff that's at Nayak Park. I, I believe it's uh, called Japanese knotweed or, or something like that. But the city has a, a brand new machine uh, that includes a, 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 what's called a flail arm. It goes off the side and you can actually, uh, it's designed specifically to take care of all of this overgrowth. So I'd requested that to be sent up to East Mountain. And um, the, their, their final request was uh, the lot at Meadow Avenue and River Street, they requested to be cleaned. So, uh, but I believe that lot is privately owned, but I, I had asked Mr. Voldenberg to look into that for us. Um, our second thing is um, 8, 812 Fellows Street is condemned. Um, it's been condemned for a long time. Actually, the, uh, con the condemnation is pretty much faded away. Um, so I, I was looking to find if that is privately owned. Also, 8th Avenue and Fellows Street, um, this is a giant property, um, overgrown. There are some old vehicles in there and stuff. So um, I, I gave you Mr. Voldenberg copies of this request. Uh, I want to find if this is a, is a land bank property or if it is privately owned um, so that we can know how to move forward on that. Um, also, um, last week we, we did some work up in the Hill section, and um, I want to thank Mike from Code Enforcement and Corporal Ianuzo from Scranton uh, Police Department. They removed um, some vehicles, some tents that were um, over these vehicles from 520 Harrison Avenue, which is a city property. Um, they told me that the, uh, the rest of the tent and the vehicles were removed, will be removed by tomorrow. Um, they also removed an old disabled uh, camper from the 900 block of Quincy Avenue. I, I don't know how long that was there, but that's been removed. Um, last week I, I mentioned um, um, an RFP for a uh, FEMA project to remove sediment from um, up at um, the brief from up across from the East Granton baseball field. Um, and then I've gotten calls for um, the rest of them when they were going to be done, and I didn't know there was the rest of them, but I did look, and there was an RFP out this weekend for um, more sediment de uh, debris removal um, that all these RFPs are due back by July 10th. They include um, Leggett's Creek, that's site number 27 by Blue Avenue, um, 
site number 28, Leggett's Creek by Rockwell Avenue. Um, site number thir 13, it's Kaiser Creek by, at, by Simplex. Um, number 18, Leggett's Creek by Hollow Avenue Bridge. And uh, number 10C, Lindy Creek by Ro Washburn Street Bridge. And um, Lindy Creek along Frank Street. Um, I believe these are all FEMA projects, and, and I, I believe there's time limits on these, so um, hopefully we can move forward all of these. I, I know they're out for RFPs, though. Um, uh, <clears throat> the residency waivers um, for the city of Scranton that we're talking about. Um, uh, the city of Scranton averages about 651 employees. The number of um, waivers that is that are currently being used is three. Um, I, I don't think council has handed out waivers for residents, um, really just handed it to anyone. Uh, I believe uh, every mayor should choose their own cabinet members, department heads, and their attorneys, and naturally as long as they're qualified for the position. Um, and I say if we have um, two applicants that are qualified for the same position and one lives in the city, I would hope that the mayor at that time would appoint the, the city resident. Um, but if, as in the past I have seen, we've only gotten applicants from people that live outside of the city um, for a, a certain position that was filled recently, um, I, I see no other choice but to um, um, provide a waiver so that we can fill that position. Um, and my last thing is the overtime legislation. I believe the overtime uh, legislation um, we have um, and needs to be uh, um, amended a bit. Um, I think everyone should be able to review all of the overtime, um, although in some cases where it may affect the well-being of, of, of certain employees by giving their names or what department they work for, I think that needs to be addressed so that doesn't um, get out to where it doesn't need to be. Uh, there is software that exists that can do the tracking of all of this overtime. Um, and, and make it safe for all employees. I know the police and fire department do a good job. They do their own um, overtime reports and, and no one seems to have any problems with that. But the legislation we have, if, if we pass that, that will be like a blanket legislation that covers everybody. So I don't know if that would make it unsafe um, for anyone else in other departments that if we don't include that in it. Um, but I, I think we need to explore how to get or implement the software um, for overtime that we can just ask for a report and, and it can be printed out for us. That's all I have, Mr. King. Thank you, Mr. Smurl. Mr. Schuster? Yes, I have a few things. Um, I, I guess I'll start with the, the overtime legislation. Um, last week I suggested that we keep it on the table and we, um, it, the offer was extended to the administration and the law department to send over their concerns, any kind of um, amendments they might want to have in it. Mr. Boldenberg and, and Mr. Gallagher, have we received anything from the law department on our overtime legislation? Not as of today, Mr. Smurl. Okay. Um, this is what I assumed would happen because I don't think there's going to be any movement on this. Um, my, uh, let's see. To get the software implemented, we're going to have to put out new RFPs, we're going to have to get new contracts, we're going to have to get the software installed. That's going to take some time. Um, that was what was suggested by the administration. Um, like I said, I, I fear that we're not going to get any movement on this. Um, I'd like to see what their suggestions are, what their concerns are, but at this point in time, we haven't heard any official concerns from them, so it doesn't seem that they're working with us for a compromise. Um, Mr. Voldenberg, could we ask about um, how many FEMA projects we have, if we can get those lists of those FEMA projects. Um, I know Mr. Smurl listed off a few, but um, just an updated list and timeline of where we are at so we could make sure we're addressing them as a city by December of this year because that is the deadline for that. I could do that, sir. Um, I do know that uh, uh, file of council 49 is gonna be brought up tonight, so maybe at some point later, I, I might have something to throw in on that one um, with the, uh, with our fire department and the billing that we've been seeing lately. Um, I should have started off with this, but I'd like to thank the Scranton Fire Department with their efforts to rescue an individual that fell into the Roaring Brook um, in the last few days, so great job with that one. 
I would like to send my condolences to the family of John Derenick of Taylor. Mr. Derenick served in the U.S. Army for 39 years. He attained the rank of Chief Warrant Officer 4, and he, he has passed away just recently. Um, we did receive some emails about the storm drains on Dale Avenue, also Grandview and uh, Kapouse Avenue with sewer lids and storm drains. Um, my email was not working. I tried to get that stuff forwarded over, but I know, I think we all got it. Did, did that get forwarded along to the correct individual? It was, it was forwarded. And we also got information on the uh, Dale Drive project. Okay, thank It's gonna take place shortly. All right, thank you. Um, there was a request for East Mountain drain basins. I think uh, while we're at East Mountain, I don't know if the if it would be most appropriate to just make a request if we could send it over to DPW to take a look at the drain basins and, and runoff basins in West Mountain. Um, we do have problems with those basins every year when the heavier rains come. Um, but if they haven't been scheduled, if we could possibly get that scheduled. I will, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm going to run through several items that I requested last week and the previous weeks. Um, I asked for a list of non-resident city employees. I know the percentage that we were given was 0.8%. Did we get a list of non-resident city employees, Mr. Moldenberg? That is up today. I expect that list tomorrow when the HR director returns. All right. Thank you. Um, the Westonfield Bathhouse, two weeks ago there was um, a study that was going to be taking place and, and we asked for an update on the bathhouse. Did we get any kind of official update on the bathhouse? I didn't. I should receive a write-up from the parks director. I don't have it as of today. All right, thank you. Um, I also asked for the licensing and inspection department on permits, um, what the average turnover time for processing permits and requests are, uh, things of that nature. Have, have we received anything on that? Turnover time is two to three days, ideally. Okay. Unless there's exceptions. Unless there's what? Exceptions. Oh, exceptions. All right, thank you. Um, other than that, um, the 300 block of Putnam, if we can keep that on, the, on our list of, of things to address, I know I put it in a couple times. Um, 502, 504 West Gibson, the fire update on that um, residence, and then 736, 738 Prescott Avenue. I don't know, I, I didn't see any information back on those addresses or properties. I'll get you a status on all three. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Boldenberg, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Schuster. Uh, Dr. Rothschild? Uh, yes, uh, first I wanted to mention, I, I think uh, Councilman King is gonna be going into it further, that we did receive an update, the update that I requested from Dr. Saxena uh, regarding what activities her, her office has uh, performed since we've last received an, an update from her. So uh, I would like to ask that that be included in third order for next week. And I sent a number of concerns, uh, properties, and complaints that I had received to Mr. Voldenberg. Uh, one of them that I did want to add, and I think it was also brought up here tonight, uh, was along the 500 block of Myrtle. And uh, this has been a problem property in the past, and there was some debate as to who had ownership of the property, where the property lines were. It had uh, a boat that was out into the street and a lot of weeds and greenery en encroaching into the street. Uh, and so that boat had been removed, but, uh, and, and I think it was cleaned up a little bit, uh, but I'm not sure who did that, and it definitely needs to be cleaned up again. I'll follow up, Dr. Rothschild. Thank you. And uh, I'd also received another complaint regarding 718 Taylor Avenue, uh, that despite um, this, despite code enforcement and zoning visiting the property before and giving them a stop work order, that they were continuing to work on the property, especially in the evenings. And uh, so I've requested that code enforcement once again visit the property to confirm if, uh, if continued work is, is occurring. Uh, did we receive an, an update or reply on that? Not as yet, Dr. Rothschild, but okay. Mr. King, Don King is working on that with the property owner. Okay, and uh, there were a number of traffic and parking studies that I've requested in the past, and I don't believe I've received any response on, and so I uh, also provided a list of those, and so the ones that I wanted to check on included a, the traffic study at Harrison Avenue and the Mulberry Street intersection to determine if a left turning signal was needed um, to turn onto Harrison. 
and a uh, parking study on the 800 block of East Gibson Street near the McFillius Royal uh, to determine if, if permit parking was still appropriate to be there. That was approved this afternoon by the traffic officer and okay. forwarded to the chief and it's on its way to the legal department. Okay. It's Wonderful. approved. Great. And um, traffic study to take place uh, up in North Scranton, like Reese Street and, and the Greenbush area. I spoke with Officer Iannuzzo, the traffic officer today, and he said he'd follow up with patrol. <clears throat> Okay, yes, and we did also ask for patrols to be there uh, because there was, I believe, like a preschool located in that area and a lot of frequent speeding, running of stop signs, people going up uh, the one way, uh, the wrong way, and uh, the residents had also requested that like the signage be replaced uh, so that it's, it's more clear to drivers that it is a one way. Uh, so those were some of the concerns over on that street. Uh, and one of the questions that I had for SPD was uh, in the past, and I've asked it multiple times, was if uh, parking tickets have been given to pe people illegally parked in handicapped spots uh, downtown in the evenings and on the weekends, and I don't believe we received a response on uh, if that's occurring, and if so, how many parking tickets have been given? No report as yet on that, Dr. Rothschild. Okay, so I would like to ask of that again. And then um, I know that we had heard the other week that there was going to be some movement on changing over those handicapped parking signs, line painting, curb painting, to make those handicapped spots more obvious. Uh, but I haven't heard anything further, and I would like to know if there's a date for when that's planned. Uh, I, I just uh, haven't really received further detail on it, and uh, it's frustrating that I've been asking for months and months about that um, and from the complaints that I've received from residents downtown who want to be able to use that handicapped parking. I'll follow up on that also. Okay, thank you. And I think that's, that's all that I have for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rothschild. Mr. McAndrew? Yeah, I have a few. I'll start off with two quality of life uh, issues. The first is 734 East Locust Street. This is a problem for years. Um, there's a poor lady who lives near there that says uh, this, this property is dilapidated and it's been abandoned for years. There's garbage in the yard. There's been gang activity, uh, gang graffiti being spray painted in this, in this, um, on this property, within the property. And also there, there's, uh, there has been incident reports. So this, this property continues to be a problem, and you know the neighbors are concerned. Nothing's being done, and and and, and I, I feel for them because, like it was stated to me, this has been going on for years. So, could we please uh, look into that one, check on the incident reports, um, and even like some of the neighbors said, there was a, there was an elderly woman like yelling at these kids, and I give her a lot of credit, but she probably should, if, you know this is gang activity related stuff. She should probably be, be careful of that. So it's, it's becoming a, a, an issue more than just blight, okay? And then next up, 1305 South Irving. It's another abandoned property with very high grass and it hasn't been taken care of. Also, uh, to Mr. Um, Argentus point about Weston Field. No one likes to have a good time more than me. Or, but if, if there's behavior that's going on there um, on the weekends and there's festivals that, you know, with food vendors, uh, the health, safety, and welfare of, of all of our residents, I hope that they're licensed. I hope they're, they're following procedures of the city. Um, you know, alcohol on uh, public parks is, 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 is not allowed, so this shouldn't be allowed and garbage. I mean, you know, I hope there's enough resectables there, but if they're not, you know, someone needs to take a, take a look at this. The, the new parks director and the police department. Okay. I'll take care of it, sir. Also, re related to that, um, we'd like a, uh, an update on the Sorrenti Center for Ms. Schumacher. And the overtime legislation. The administration has had a copy of that for three weeks. They're complaining that it needs to be amended. I think we all agree it needs to be amended, but it's not gonna be amended until they provide us with the information we asked for. 
And this is why I didn't want to table it last week. That would have forced them to provide the amendments they seek. No, it sits on the table because they don't want it, period. All right, so, and then next, so for the past couple months, I received pictures of bills uh, to homeowners that, and, and, and God love them and, and have a fire, right? A structural fire. They're being provided bills by the fire department. We had a caucus here with Chief Judge, uh, maybe two months ago, and he told me that there's an ordinance that allows it. I'm like, okay, I never heard of it, right? I talked to firefighters that said, oh, we just start doing this. We don't want to do it, and I feel for them, but you know, it's part of their job that they have to uh, populate a little bill and send it to the resident or, or send it to administration. But it's, it's, everybody I talked to said they never heard of it, right? So Chief Judge informed us at caucus that all oh, this has been going on as long as I'm, I'm, I'm in the fire department. So I said, okay. And I received some more bills, right? This is becoming, um, it's happening often, and, and it's, you know, we pay taxes. For, for you know the fire department and, and God willing, we, none of us have a fire, but that's why we pay taxes. So the bill I received here, right, from somebody who recently got this, had a mulch fire on their property. I don't even know if, if, if they called the fire department. Maybe a neighbor did, but that's okay. The fire department shows up, puts it out with the resident's hose, and then provides a bill with the list of charges, I'm not gonna go through them all, but the bill is $2,300, all right? So th there's, there's, some, there's a problem here, right? So with that said, I thought, well, you know what, let me take a look at the ordinance because we did pass an ordinance in 21, and that's filed to the council of number 49. This is an amended ordinance to the one of 2000, right? The only thing stated on this ordinance, and this was discussed in caucus, is, Oh, we just increased the fees. And I get that. Okay, so you're amending this from 2000 to 2021, and they're, you know, they're restructuring the fees and increasing them. But in this legislation, the fees only relate to, I'm not going to read the whole um, ordinance, but in the event there's an automobile accident in the city, and there's, there's fluids, you know, that are spilled. Um, and I get that, and I'm okay with that that the fire department comes, make sure it's safe, no one doesn't catch on fire, make sure this is taken care of in a safe manner. And you know what, Bill, the, the car insurance should, should pay for this. I'm okay with that, because this could be a delivery truck from out of town, it could be, it's, it's not always a resident that, 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 that incurs this, right? So um, I was okay with this, right? So then I started seeing these bills again. So nowhere in this ordinance uh, cites the word structure, right? So I thought, well, let me go back, because this is amended from 2000. So I go back to the 2000 uh, ordinance, number 47, pretty much says the same thing. That, you know, the jaws of life, uh, apparatuses like that, this is, you know, this fee schedule is for vehicle accidents, you know, and emergencies when re related to vehicles in the city, right? And, the, you know, the, the charges are here, and that's how they're going to be charged, which, again, I'm okay with that, but guess what? The bill that people are getting on the bottom says incident type, structural fire response, location, blah, 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 uh, ordinance info as per city, as per the city of Scranton's file of council number 49 ordinance. There, it's not there. It's vehicles. This is structure, right? So I go back a little farther. I think, you know what, maybe, I don't know, maybe I missed something, maybe they missed something. 40, this one uh, cites 49, which is the newest one. That's 2021. The only thing that's been amended in the 2021 one is the rates. They increase, and we get that, but only for vehicle emergencies. Nothing about structure, right? So I thought, okay, let me go back to 1999. I go back to 1999, the original ordinance. Structure's not in here. It's basically um, vehicles. All right? And we're okay with that, like we said. But the problem I have now is, I'm only hearing about it, um, most people are only hearing about it now, and, and to be told that this has been common practice all the way back to 1999, I, I, I'm not buying it, I'm sorry. Um, 
And we did reach out today, and what did, what did the chief say? Oh, it was something we always do, right? N normally do. That's correct, sir. Well, I'm sorry. I, I, it, to me, and I hate to say this, and I, it looks like a money grab, all right? Um, it's never been done before. Okay, maybe someone can go back to me and say, you know, we meant to do it in 99, it was never enforced. I can even buy that. But to have the original ordinance, two amended ordinances that don't refer to vehicle, I, I'm sorry, don't refer to structural fires, only vehicle, and all of a sudden people are getting billed now, maybe in the last year. Uh, it's not fair to the residents of Scranton. They're not aware of it. Um, and then we're told, which, is, which doesn't make any sense, uh, during caucus, well, um, this, comp this company co collects, is, collects the, you know, the money uh, for us and, and it's used for apparatus and equipment, which is, you know, that's fine if it's just for vehicles only, fires. But we're told in caucus, well, if, if the resident doesn't pay it, we, we don't put them to collections. So I, I don't understand. I, 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 so what I want to know in closing, I want to know is, if this has been common practice since all the way back to 99, I want to see proof of that. I want to see bills for the past 10 years that have been given to residents for structural fires. Because I don't believe they exist. And if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll, I'll apologize and admit I am, but I just never heard of it. And n neither had the residents. So they're the ones we're here for. They're the ones we're sticking up for. So please get that information. Mr. McKendrick, can I also throw in here that? Sure. Um, you know, the, the billing references file of Council 49 on, on the billing itself. Can we also ask the law department if they could give us our, their justification as how we could bill residents um, according to this ordinance? Sure. Well, I'd like to listen to everybody. <laughs> it should be fun. Is that it, Mr. McAndrew? That is all I have. Thank could, you. Could, Thank I, you. could I add one more thing? So we have a, an agency that collects. Um, d does that collection agency go back to 1999? I, I feel it only goes back to 2014. How, how many bills have they sent out through that collection agency and what years those contracts were renewed? I'll get that information, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McAndrew. So Schuster. Um, just some follow-up from some speakers last week. Uh, there was Michael Passero, uh, per Andrew Sunday, court enforcement uh, manager. The West Side inspectors will be focusing on the below properties and their issues, uh, which would have been Friday, June 16th. Uh, City Council will follow up on all the properties for status and resolution. Those areas were at the 1,000 block of Oxford Street. Um, Looks like uh, South Edwards Court behind the post office, under Railroad Bridge on Luzerne Street near Bellevue section, a uh, group of homes on Bellevue side of Railroad Bridge, junk, junk blue car on the corner and trash pile behind the homes, a Dollar General on Meridian Avenue, an area surrounding Sunoco Station at the corner of South Main and Division Streets. If we can get um, an update, it sounds like uh, code enforcement was there on Friday. They were, sir. I'll get an update. Thank you very much. Um, Scott Thomas, CEO, Scranton Public Library. The no parking sign at the library book drop unit was removed when ABM placed parking kiosks on that block. Danielle Dolan, ABM parking coordinator, is reviewing for removal of a parking spot to allow easy vehicle access for book drop off. DPW will then replace with no parking sign. Uh, we did receive the city public health coordinator work summary and we'll ask to put that in third order for next week. Uh, damage drain at Kapaus Avenue and Grandview Street. Um, we asked our DPW team uh, to please review and advise the status on the broken drain at the corner of Kapaus Avenue and Grandview Street. Also asked for DPW team to please advise a timeline on repairs. Also spoke to the mayor uh, this afternoon. We talked a little bit about uh, Rubicon. She indicated that she's got a meeting tomorrow with DPW. Um, she indicated that the new routes started on June 14th, which would have been um, last Wednesday. Um, I also asked her to increase the police presence um, at Nayog Park. Um, 
there was a, uh, con some concern expressed about the number of people starting to utilize the gorge. And as we found out, you know, our fire department, and probably an emergency uh, certified people were down in the gorge. Uh, individual had to be rescued. Um, well, that individual, I think, I don't know what that individual was doing, but I think came off of the expressway and somehow ended up in the gorge. But I'm talking more about the swimmers, people starting to head into Nayog Gorge and how many people have been have died through the years swimming and diving in the Nayog Gorge. So the mayor indicated to me that they do have signage there, they have cameras, but I asked her if she could incre increase the police presence, especially on warmer days where it's likely to uh, increase, where people are likely to go down in there. We um, will contact the single tax office concerning the property tax uh, database updates along with the trash fees um, that Joan had mentioned earlier that hasn't been updated since February of 23. The HUP test, uh, there were no bidders. They're going to do a second bid and try to increase their advertisement to try to get someone to uh, bid on that HUP test, which will really go out and evaluate the pilots um, in the city. So hopefully we can, we can get some interested parties in doing that. Um, the one concern I have tonight uh, with the the one individual that's being named. We never, uh, did we ever get an answer? Uh, I think the person's name is Coney Barrett and it was mentioned earlier. Um, I don't know that we have an actual address of that individual. I think it has it list, I think it's listed as a work address. So the question is, does she live at the business? Um, and if not, where in the city does she live? So I just want to see if we can get clarification on that. Um, street signs, where are we? Um, the mayor is meeting with DPW tomorrow. Um, she seemed to be very concerned about this, that it's not moving at the rate that she would like to see. I said good, because it's not moving at the rate that we would like to see. So um, hopefully, you know, they can develop a plan as to how they're going to get those street signs out um, ASAP. She did indicate that over time um, they're working on establishing a reporting system and each employee will end up with an employee ID number. Um, so apparently that's a work in progress. Uh, I mentioned something to her about the burn ban, and she said in reviewing it with council, she indicated that this burn ban actually enhances our compliance with the with the First Amendment. Um, you know, there were some com some comments made earlier this evening that uh, we're a three-two council, and a um, number of us are just here to support the mayor. Um, you know, all I could tell you about that is I've sat on this council uh, through three two votes. I've sat here for four one votes. I've sat here for five zero votes. Um, I think the last thing the people in the city want are five zero votes across the board every single time there's a vote. Um, and, and granted, the majority of our votes are five zeros. Um, a lot of us, you know, I've said this before. I'll say it again. You know, we don't always agree on everything. Um, sometimes we generally agree, but maybe in how things are being implemented, we might disagree, which would lead to 3-2 or 4-1 votes. That's the case. Um, you know, for, for those that don't like, you know, the way that I vote or somebody else might vote, you know, my advice is um, go out, get signatures, run, run for the seat, and come up and, and serve on city council. I would encourage that. I really would. Um, this is the first time I've ever, you know, run for a public office and I'm sitting up here and, you know, we have to make difficult decisions and sometimes people aren't happy with them. Just because I vote a certain way doesn't mean that it's wrong because someone else disagrees with that. 
Um, but at, you know, at the end of the day, I've said this before, I believe that every one of us up here has the best interest of the city, you know, in mind when we do take votes, you know, and in, in terms of, of tabling that legislation on the overtime, um, I do have some concerns. I do support, you know, overtime legislation. I just want to make sure that it's passed and implemented properly so that we don't end up getting ourselves jammed up um, legally. So, you know, that having been said, um, hopefully we can get, you know, the adjustments or changes made from the administration so that we can ultimately move that legislation forward. And that's all I have. Thank you. 5B for an induction, an ordinance installing a multi-way stop at the intersection of Kapaus Avenue and Poplar Street to allow adequate sight distance for westerly Poplar Street vehicles. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, for introduction and ordinance, establishing a multi-way stop at the intersection of South Irving Avenue and Birch Street to allow adequate sight distance for vehicles exiting South Irving Avenue. At this time, I'll entertain a motion item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction and ordinance establishing a multi-way stop at the intersection of South Bromley Avenue and Washburn Street to allow adequate sight distance for vehicles exiting South Bromley Avenue. At this time I'll entertain a motion item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5E for introduction and ordinance, establishing a multi-way stop at the intersection of North Sumner Avenue and Theodore Street with installation of stop bars at all stop sign locations and four feet behind crosswalks where appropriate with installation of school signs on Theodore Street at each approach to the school campus and installation of speed limit signs on the Theodore Street at appropriate intervals to improve traffic operations and pedestrian safety in a school zone. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5F for introduction and ordinance establishing a multi way stop at the intersection of North Lincoln Avenue and Theodore Street with installation of stop bars at all stop sign locations and four feet behind crosswalks where appropriate, with installation of school signs on the Theodore Street on each approach to the school campus and installation of speed limit signs on Theodore Street at appropriate intervals to improve traffic operations and pedestrian safety in a school zone. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. On the question, I'm happy to see these pieces of legislation come to us tonight because uh, I think it's really important for us to be able to make these changes in order to make it safer for the schools. And we've received a number of complaints, not just near this school, but uh, from other schools requesting uh, traffic studies because of complaints of frequent speeding of vehicles. And uh, I, you know, I know we all want to do what we can to make it safer for students to be able to cross um, and to limit speeding in these areas. So I would caution drivers when you are driving near a school, um, please be please be careful of of the kids and and of your your speeding and um, and and your traffic violations. And that's all. Thank you. I agree with that, and I am actually thrilled to see that a number of these. Um, Items are being passed here to improve safety in all these areas this evening. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5G for introduction and ordinance creating a sidewalk cafe and parklet program to replace the city of Scranton's previous special encroachment permit parking. At this time I'll entertain a motion that item 5G be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. On the question, um, 
I, I know I voted in, in favor previously when this was brought up during the pandemic. I'm also in favor of it tonight. This is something that it, it is not just relevant to our city, but many other cities have uh, taken action and allowed for, uh, for local businesses or restaurants to continue having space on, like say on sidewalks uh, for their uh, for their businesses, for outdoor dining during nicer weather, and I know it's something that, like, that I personally enjoy being able to to sit outside at a number of of restaurants downtown, uh, and I, I think it's helpful for their their businesses. So I'm supportive of this continuing. Now I didn't see a time frame. I saw the $25 permit fee, but it just said for initiation and to apply for the permit. Uh, am I was I missing that or did? Uh, Anyone else know a, a time frame? Is it just an annual permit fee? Does it need to be, is there a date for it to be? I believe it's annual, sure perhaps we can make sure we can check with the administration that's to find that. I'd imagine it is. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that's what I'm imagining too. But like I said, it said $25 as initiation fee. So, um, you know, I don't want to assume that that's what's going to continue to be the fee uh, on an annual basis, but uh, that's, that's what it appears to be. So yeah, let's just check on that anyway, to make sure. Yeah, I think we'll check for sure. Mm -hmm. And you know, on the question, I'd also like to say, you know, having been to uh, places like Media, Phoenixville, and other towns in the city, uh, in the state, across the Commonwealth, um, this happens all over in, in you know smaller cities, cities like like uh, the size of Scranton. And I think it really helps to make the city much more lively and brings people out and encourages encourages business you know in the city of Scranton. and so I'll, I'll be supporting this this evening all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the ayes have it and so moved 5h for introduction and ordinance amending and updating the city of scranton's fireworks code to align with pennsylvania's amended fireworks law act 74 of 2022 to further restrict the use of fireworks. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5H be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. On the question, I, I've been talking about the fireworks complaints for years, and we've frequently heard them here in council and, and received them from residents, and uh, I often felt like not enough was being done about it. So I am happy to see us uh, tightening up our ordinance and that the, the state had uh, had done that through legislation last year as well. Uh, I did have some concerns about the time frame, so I did want to ask, like, what the what the reasoning was behind on a couple of those dates for it to be until 1 a.m. That that seems pretty late for me. Um, <laughs> uh, and I, I mean, there's a lot of concerns about about fireworks. You know, certainly being a nuisance to your neighbors, and we're in a city, we're not in a rural area where no one's going to hear it um, when you set it off, but it's it's also like a danger to other people's properties and a danger to the people themselves uh, setting them off. So, um, if we could just check on the proposed hours, I, I'd appreciate that. Uh, but other than that, I'm happy to see this put forward. On the question, so I'm glad too that we we've, we've actually got this legislation. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, that jumped out at me too, I'm thinking the 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. the following day might be an error. Uh, it just doesn't, I don't know, unless it's New Year's Eve, I don't know. But someone reached out to me. Um, there was a very nice lady named Deborah Niehaus, and a couple months back, she spearheaded the proclamation we did for women, of, the first women in Lackawanna. And it was a great job, she did a fantastic job. But she also reached out to me after seeing, you know, um, our legislation coming up. And she said, instead of purchase fireworks, why don't we challenge Scrantonians to buy some cat and dog food and donate uh, to the Griffin Pond Animal Shelter or any other animal shelter. So uh, that will be putting money toward helping animals instead of harassing them and causing them horrific stress. So you know what, it's a good idea. Uh, some people, you know, most people don't like fireworks from we, we've heard the past couple of years here in chambers. So uh, it was nice to get that little note from her and I, 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 I wanted to pass that on. On the question, there, there was uh, an additional point that I wanted to add about this piece. Um, I think it's, it's only as good as it's enforced and that's the problem. We've also 
seen in the past. So I, I'm glad to see that on 4th of July weekend that there will be two officers devoted to issuing these fines and that the fine is increased. But we need to constantly be doing that because just because we we say it could only be during, you know, take place during these holidays and 150 feet away from structures doesn't mean that people are going to adhere to that. Uh, so if residents do see it as a problem, I would encourage them to make that complaint to like to the non-emergency line or, or to uh, 311 to be able to get um, an officer out there at the time when it's occurring to be able to issue those fines. All those all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5I for introduction of resolution. Authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials, including but not limited to the business administrator and or fire chief, to execute and enter into, consummate, and execute a lease agreement, lease purchase agreement for Sutphin Kenworth T4 Air and Command Unit and Sutphin Custom Engine with First Security Finance, Inc. The time will entertain a motion on item 5I be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5J for introduction, a resolution. Authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into any and all documents necessary to convey to Pennsylvania American Water Company a deed of easement and right of way to construct, operate, and repair a combined sewage overflow containment tank in the vicinity of the South Washington Avenue pump station. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5J be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, so moved. 5K for introduction of resolution, ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to Bloomberg Philanthropies for up to $25,000 to be used towards the Asphalt Art Initiative. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5K be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. On the question, there is a match here to this grant, and it's, it's stated that it's going to be a volunteer match. So if we could just reach out to uh, the department that's um, applying for this grant and, and just get some clarification on how that volunteer match is going to work. I will, sir. Thanks. On the question, I, I'm a big supporter of public art, and so uh, I'm very interested to see what they do with this initiative. But I would like to hear more about the, about the plans uh, uh, for those areas and uh, what they're going to be doing further, what the, the art will be like. Uh, I was uh, interested previously, and, and I think it's something to continue to engage with the administration on about, uh, about legislation for mural projects. Uh, so that's something that I'd certainly like to uh, further discuss with them, and I think this will, will help spark that initiative. I will, Dr. Rothschild. Thank you. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. 5L, for introduction to resolution, authorizing the city to reimburse itself in the amount not to exceed $5 million for expenditures paid by the city from its general fund in connection with capital projects to be completed during calendar year 2023-2024 with a non-taxable debt issuance and in compliance with section 1.1502 of the United States Treasury regulations as amended and authorizing the mayor and proper officers of the city to carry out the intent and purpose of this resolution, specifically including, but not limited to, the making of timely reimbursement allocations upon the issuance of the debt. This time I'll entertain a motion, item 5L be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. On the question, if we can reach out to the business department and just ask for an explanation of, of an explanation further of how they're going to do this. I do know that this was a recommendation uh, from bond council, Brian Kozlanski and from PFM, but if we can get further clarification, it'd be great. Thank you. On the I question, will. I'd also like to know if there's precedence for this before, if we've um, borrowed from the capital funds in advance and reimbursed ourselves, uh, because it, uh, 
just seems odd to me. So I, I'd like to know if this has been done in the past. And if we could also throw on there, if there's any type of a fee schedule with if we're going to be using bond council, any type of fees associated with this type of a transaction. Okay, on the question. So the way I read this is, and I don't understand. Um, so they want to take money from the capital fund and do some work and then take a loan to pay us back. Why is there enough money in there to do it from the fr in the first place? Um, we're flush with ARPA money. <laughs> I mean, isn't some of this could be used towards that? We're, we're, we're told that, you know, we have some extra in this area and the lost revenue, we could probably use it here. But this, just the paragraph I'm reading, I didn't read all the backup, I did some, but the administration's asking me, or Pell, or whoever else, uh, are asking me to take money from the general fund, spend it, and then uh, approve later on a loan to pay it back. I, I, I have a little problem with this, so. Of course, I want the same information my colleagues just asked for. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5M for introduction to resolution ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to the Charging and Fueling Infrastructure Discretionary Grant Program for up to $9 million to be used towards the Pennsylvania Community Alliance Vehicle Charging Project. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5L be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. On the question also, um, if we could just get some more clarification on the match fund, if this is to be awarded. I will, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Goldenberg. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file the council number 65, 2023, an ordinance amending chapter 203 of city code, contractors, permits, and inspections to amend the fee schedule for permits for contracting work, also known as building permits. You heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it, so moved. 6P, reading by title, file the council number 66, 2023, an ordinance establishing a no parking zone on the easterly side of Kapaus Avenue from a point 70 feet south of the southerly curb line of Walnut Street to a point 35 north of the northerly curb line of Walnut Street on the westerly side of Kapaus Avenue from a point 35 feet south of the southerly curb line of Walnut Street to a point 95 feet north of the cur northerly curb line of Walnut Street to maintain adequate sight distance for traffic exiting Walnut Street onto or across Kapaus Avenue. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption, file the council number 59, 2023, establishing a no parking zone along the westerly side of North Main Avenue from a point 75 feet south of the southerly curb line for Clearview Street to a point 112 feet north of the northerly curb line for Clearview Street on the southerly side of Clearview Street from the North Main Avenue to North Decker Court, and on the northerly side of Clearview Street from North Main Avenue to a point 60 feet west of the westerly curb line of North Main Avenue, or just past the entrance to the used car sales parking lot to allow adequate space for the Colts bus pull off and to allow adequate sight distance for vehicles exiting Clearview Street. What's the recommendation, Chairperson, for the Committee on Public Works? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption, file the Council Number 60, 2023, 
establishing a no parking zone along the southerly side of Music Street from the westerly curb line of South Webster Avenue westerly for a distance of 115 feet and on the southerly side of Music Street from the easterly curb line of South Webster Avenue easterly for a distance of 50 feet to allow adequate sight distance for northbound South Webster Avenue vehicles. What's the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I hear very clear. Item 7B, legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, file to Council number 61, 2023, amending the city's open burn prohibition to explicitly allow an exception for public demonstration under certain conditions. What's the recommendation of the Chairperson of the Committee on Public Safety? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final vote of item 7C. Second. On the question. On the question, as I said the last couple of weeks, I feel like this is an odd, um, an odd uh, ordinance to be passed. I didn't really uh, like the uh, justification that we got just recently, so I'll be voting no on this. On the question, so last week I stated I would never burn the American flag unless it fell on the ground. I'm against burning the American flag, but I'm not, I'm not against the First Amendment or protest. I just think this is going to be a First Amendment nightmare for us down the road. Um, it's not like people are burning the flag once a week in Scranton. So I question why the ordinance. We get an email from the solicitor saying, well, you know, it's recommended, you know, it has nothing to do with the, um, the National Firefighters Code and, or International Firefighters Code. They don't, they don't refer to burning the flag. They, they have some open burn uh, policies, but I'm old enough to remember women burning their bras in the 60s and 70s as a form of protest, right? They weren't asked to have permission to do it, what, which kind of bra to wear, in three days' notice, right? So I think we're overstepping our bounds. I'd love to know why the big push for this. Um, it just came out of nowhere, this ordinance, so, so I question that. My, my eyebrow is raised for that. Uh, I, just, I just have a, an issue with this, not against, um, you know, the health, safety, and welfare. I get that. And, and, but Mr. Coy made a good point. What if I want to do it on a Sunday? Who's going to approve it for me? Or what if I want to do it, like, how many days? I just think we're going down a slippery slope here, and I don't want, you know, a year or two down the road, litigation to come back on me in some form. And at least I can say, you know what, I didn't vote for it. So that's why I'm voting no. On the question, I, I agree with uh, the concerns about this legislation. I think a lot of protests happen organically. Uh, they're not necessarily planned, and so for people to, for there to be consequences if they were to to burn the flag or you know the requiring a permit it just um, this doesn't really sit right with with me either uh, so I'll be voting no on this roll call please mr. Smurl no mr. Schuster no dr. Rothschild no mr. McAndrew no mr. King yes the motion dies 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file the Council Number 63, 2023, an ordinance to provide revenue for the City of Scranton by imposing a tax upon the privilege of attending or engaging in non-exempt amusements, including every form of entertainment, diversion, sport, recreation, and pastime, requiring all persons, partnerships, associations, and corporations conducting places of amusements imposing duties and conferring powers upon the treasurer of the city of Scranton, prescribing the method and manner of collecting the tax imposed by this ordinance, imposing penalties for the violation thereof, and imposing said tax with adjustments to said tax as previously enacted. What is the recommendation of chairperson for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question, 
Roll call, please. Mr. Samaro? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 250, 2023, appointment of the City of Scranton's Finance Director, Scranton, Pennsylvania, as a member of the Tax Collection Committee as the City of Scranton's first alternate delegate. The City of Scranton's Finance Director's term is effective upon execution of the resolution and will expire June 27, 2027. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7E. Second. On the question. On the well, question, I, I know that this we're just putting the person's title in there rather than a, an actual individual's name um, in case of turnover, I imagine. Um, I did ask about the finance director. Do we have a city finance director? It is Matt Dominus, sir. Okay, it is Matt Dominus. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I hereby declare item 7E legally and lawfully adopted. 7F for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 251, 2023, appointment of the City of Scranton's Treasurer, Scranton, Pennsylvania, as a member of the Tax Collection Committee as the City of Scranton's second alternate delegate. The City of Scranton's Treasurer's term is effective upon execution of the resolution and will expire June 27, 2027. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7F. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I hereby declare item 7F legally and lawfully adopted. 7G for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 252, 2023. Reappointment of William R. Laser, Scranton, Pennsylvania, as a member of the Tax Collection Committee for a term of four years. William Laser's holdover term is considered effective and extended upon execution of the resolution and will expire June 27, 2027. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7G. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I hereby declare item 7G legally and lawfully adopted. 7H for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, resolution number 253, 2023, amending resolution number 188, 2023, and further amending resolution number 46, 2022, entitled amending number 175, 2021 authorizing, empowering, and directing, directing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to appoint liaisons between the city of Scranton and Berkheimer, the duly appointed collector of earned income tax for the Lackawanna County Tax Collection District for the express purpose of sharing confidential tax information with the district for official purposes to update city of Scranton representative authorized to receive confidential tax information and to remove proper names and allow for the City of Scranton Treasurer to be authorized to receive confidential tax information. What is the recommendation of the Chairperson for Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7H. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King. Yes, I hereby declare item 7H legally and lawfully adopted. 7I for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 254, 2023, appointment of Connie Bennett, Scranton, Pennsylvania, as a member to the Board of Scranton Planning Commission for a term of four years. Connie Bennett's term will begin upon execution of the resolution and will expire on May 31, 2027. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final vote on item 7i. Second. On the question. On the question. I was happy that Mr. King brought it up earlier in the meeting as I had concerns about it as well. Did we get uh, this individual's 
residence or address in the city? It wasn't confirmed as of this afternoon because the person in the law department was out for a week. All right. But I should have the information tomorrow for you. All right. With that being said, I'd like to make a motion to table 7I second, until we second. get the, the residence. Okay. There's been a motion. It's been seconded that we table item 7I on the question. On the question, um, I, I do appreciate Mrs. Bennett's experiences as a hairstylist, and um, it appears she's very accomplished. I mean, I think she was on Oprah Winfrey's team for design, which, which is uh, quite impressive. Uh, and, and she's a business owner. She's been a business owner since 2016. So uh, I certainly respect that. And I don't think that everyone on our planning commission has like specific planning experience or degree in that. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with her, uh, with her being on the commission, her being an appointee. I do, of course, want to make sure that uh, we properly researched under her legal name for, uh, for the taxes. So uh, that's why I'll be um, you know, voting yes to for the motion to table. Okay, on the question to table, um, my only question is where, where does this individual live? That's the only, my only question, I have no problem appointing this individual, I want to make sure that this individual actually lives in the city of Scranton. All those in favor, well, let's do roll call to table. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Ms. Er, Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Motion's table. 7J, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption, resolution number 255, 2023, authorizing the City of Scranton to accept a monetary donation from the Keystone Sanitary Landfill for a 2023 John Deere peep tier backhoe loader per CoStars contract, as noted, from Five Star Equipment. Was a recommendation of the Chairperson of the Committee on Public Works? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of item 7J. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I hereby declare item 7J legally and lawfully adopted. 7K for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 256, 2023. Appointment of Christopher McClatchy, Scranton, Pennsylvania, as a member of the Civil Service Commission. Christopher McClatchy's term will be effective immediately upon execution of the resolution, and his term will end with the term of Mayor Paige G. Cognetti in accordance with the Civil Service Commission authorizing legislation. Mr. Chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7K. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I hereby declare item 7K legally and lawfully adopted. 7L, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 257, 2023, advocating permanent funding for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania's whole home repairs program. What is the recommendation of Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Commun Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7L. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Smurl? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I hereby declare item 7L legally and lawfully adopted. Eighth Order, 8A, filed to Council number 62, 2023. This ordinance is the HUD 2023 Annual Action Plan. There was a public hearing that took place um, this evening at 5.45 p.m. 8B, filed to Council number 64, 2023. This ordinance has created an overtime reporting requirement for all city departments and employees. It's been tabled until we receive additional information from the administration. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Here's everything, buddy.